now coffee. All right, y'all. How are y'all doing? It's Tuesday, Self-Care Tuesday, and I thought I'd take a minute to explain the name of the segment, or really my ending phrase, but I kind of think of all of these at-home meetings for now because it's just in a small segment, but I thought I'd take a minute to explain that whole bearing lightness of being. So, <clears throat> the name of this segment of my show, and dear God, I need social distancing to really be over because I want more segments, <laughs> music, interviews, what have you. But anyways, the name of this segment, Bearing Lightness of Being, came from my, from the blog I held from about 2007 until 2014. It was mildly successful. No, it wasn't. But don't worry, you've never heard of it because it wasn't that successful. <laughs> Um, anyways, and I tended to keep it in epistolary form, writing to people like my grandmother who'd passed, or my uncle, or Marie Antoinette, or the goddesses Athena and Aphrodite. I wrote to them a lot, too. Actually, I tended to write to those people the most, in general, especially my grandmother when I needed advice. We weren't close while she was alive, but since she's become one of the ancestors, I find myself speaking to her and my Uncle John the most in times of trouble. I speak to my Uncle John a lot because... He died of HIV, AIDS, and he was also gay, and you can imagine growing up how that would have been incredible to have him as an uncle, but he died when I was 10 years old, and I always wondered how different life could have been had he been alive and around. But that's that. Um, so I found myself speaking to my grandmother and my Uncle John, but that's a really long digression there. Um, the name bearing lightness of being. Okay, so let's fast, let's fast, let's rewind. There we go. Let's rewind a long ways back where I was coming fresh off of a two year sabbatical from life as I explored my shadow self and basically did nothing. And it all sounds good in theory, but there was a lot of hurt and pain and unknown self that I was processing so much. At some point during that period, my roommate Kai had a movie binge for a period where he wanted to go through and watch so many of the classics and luckily since he was one of my roommates we all got to partake in movie night um so this is before netflix so it was finding a lot of these at the local movie rental place that's fun but athens had an amazing movie rental scene and i think it's still there one of the movies he rented though was the unbearable lightness of being the unbearable lightness of being is a 1984 novel by Milan Kundera about two women, two men, a dog, and their lives in the 1968 Prague Spring period of Czechoslovak history. Straight off Wikipedia. I should have read it a little bit, but here's a definition for the movie. Again, straight off Wikipedia. The Unbearable Lightness of Being, the film, is a 1988 American drama film, an adaptation of the 1984 novel of the same name by the same author, Milan Kundera, it was directed by Philip Kaufman, who co-wrote the screenplay with Jean-Claude Carrier and stars Daniel Day-Lewis, Juliette Binoche, and Lena Olin. The film portrays Czechoslovak, Czechoslovak artistic and intellectual life during the Prague Spring and the effect on the main characters of the communist oppression that resulted from the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968. That was a fucking mouthful. Yes, I have a dirty mouth. If you've not seen the movie, I recommend it, and I don't think I do the movie justice in trying to explain the lightness of being, but long story short, a turn recurrence, we have one life to live, explore life, and don't tie yourself down with oppression, expectations, etc. You can maybe see where part of that can be incredibly healing and captivating. The exploring life and not tying oneself down with oppression and expectations and shame, especially if you're coming from a religious background, and mine was only somewhat religious. Um, Imagine those who had it worse off than I did. Also, in the movie, the dog's name is Karenin, and I have a torrid affair with Anna Karina. Anna Karina? Someone taught me the correct pronunciation, and I don't think I'm using it, but I digress. I even dragged poor Eddie to that remake with Karen Knightley and Jude Law, but that's a totally different discussion. Um, I still enjoyed it, and then that movie in turn inspired Katy Perry's. There was a lot of that around the same time period, but um, one of her music videos, which I can't remember the name of now, but long search for it. I love period pieces and I love over the top period pieces and this one was done in a really interesting way it reminded me of 
It reminded me of another movie that I can't remember the name of right now. Maybe I'll put it right there. In post. Um, anyways. The name is about the lightness being unbearable. But in reality, it's something we all have to bear. You can say it's unbearable, but you're still enduring. You're still making it. And at that point, I was still making it. I was bearing the lightness of being. In the movie, Daniel Day-Lewis' character, he's kind of this philandering husband. He's got a young wife, played by Juliette Binoche, and then he has a long-term affair with Lena Olin's character. And both Lena Olin and Ju Daniel Day-Lewis' character have a very laissez-faire approach to life, so to speak. It's the unbearable lightness of being, so to speak. You're bearing and making the most and allowing yourself to rise, so to speak, to what you may or may not be. Whereas Juliette Binoche's character, if I'm remembering correctly, struggles, and I mean, number one, her husband's cheating on her, but also struggles with her religious upbringing and being held back by religious expectations and all that. I'm doing the movie a horrible disservice, so I say go watch it, go read the book. The writer swore after that movie that none of his films would be adapted, so there's that. <laughs> none of his books would be adapted because they really didn't honor the story, but make with that what you will. So anyways, at that point, I was still making it, and at this point, you're still making it. And after going through a season where self-harm for me was a serious issue in my life, I mean, at that point, I was sending contracts every session, promising, every therapy session, promising I wouldn't harm myself in between our sessions. But in between, I had to find a way to learn how to live for others if I couldn't live for myself. And I slowly began embracing and bearing the lightness of being. My journey to self-actualization, well, all our journeys, they begin at birth, but my conscious path to self-actualization, me consciously setting out, started in 2007. That's 13 years ago. And if you've just started yours, your process won't happen overnight, and it'll continue for as long as you live. But if you go through the process of finding yourself and becoming yourself, you will be transformed and transformed for the better. It's hard for me to look back and think about who that person was 13, 14, 16 years ago because number one, I didn't think that I'd live this long and number two, here I am and I couldn't be happy in life. As they say, it gets better. It gets so much better. So that's really all I have for today also. Today's the day, so don't get to sign up and tune in later today from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. as Out of Hand Theater and Positive Impact Health Center team up to stop stigma surrounding HIV with a very fun virtual interactive theater experience. You can sign up and by visiting their website at www. Oh. <laughs> you can sign up by visiting their website at www.outofhandtheater.com slash stop HIV stigma. All right, y'all. As always, keep bearing the lightest of being. I love you, and until next time.